Hello, this is the Mushroom Wizard, and I'm returning once again with another presentation regarding the mushrooms found in Saskatchewan and the ways in which we go about uh, picking those mushrooms and identifying those mushrooms. So this is uh, the second video of what I would consider to be the uh, most advanced of the mushroom picking videos. Uh, and this one regards mushrooms that are unique in that they have an, an extra addition to their anatomy. They have a vulva, which is around the base of the stipe. And the vulva is from a universal veil that covers the entire mushroom in kind of like this egg sac. And when the, it, the mushroom rips through that veil, uh, it of course remains on the bottom because it's cemented sort of to the ground there. And you can see in the pictures here that there is this kind of sac on the bottom of the mushroom, and that's called a vulva. Uh, so there are two groups or two different presentations regarding vulval fungi that we'll be looking at. Uh, edible vulval fungi, there is this one, and then there is the one specific to uh, the Amanita genus. And the reason these mushrooms are considered advanced mushrooms uh, so to say, is because um, among the most toxic of all mushrooms are some of the species of Amanita. And some of those species also bear close resemblance to the fungi that we're going to be looking at in this presentation. So those two mushrooms that I'm referring to are, of course, the Destroying Angel and the Death Cap. So let's continue here. The uh, genre that we'll be looking at are Mutinus, Phallus, Vulvariella, and Vulvopluteus. And I'd just like to note here as well, I would not consider Mutinus and Phallus to be advanced mushrooms. They'll be more intermediate or beginner mushrooms, uh, mainly because they don't resemble death caps or destroying angels. It's the other two uh, genera that are problematic. So. Let's continue here. What are vulval fungi? Fungi that begin in an egg-like universal veil. Fungi that develop a vulva at the stipe base. And then just, just uh, as I've already mentioned, this presentation excludes fungi from the amanated genus. The first species that we're going to be looking at, or a group of species actually, are the dog stinkhorns. These are uh, species found in the Mutinus genus. So in Saskatchewan, we have at least three. We have Mutinus caninus. On the left, we have uh, Mutinus ravinelli in the center, and we have Mutinus elegans on the right. And they all look very similar, slight variations in color, maybe in size, stuff like that. So the fruiting body, because it really isn't a cap, and uh, a stipe so much as just one single uh, fruiting body is uh, light pink with a red apex in Mutinus ravinelli or else orange to red in uh, Mutinus caninus and Mutinus elegans. These develop a sheath of olive to black slime at the apex. So if you look at that photo there, uh, that's not actually a cap on top of a stipe. What it is is slime that's slowly coating the top of this long horn-like structure. And uh, it is quite gross. Um, the structure itself is cylindrical and then it tapers at the apex as you can see there. And it's more slender in Mutinus elegans. It's also curved in Mutinus elegans and more straight in the others. There are pits across the entire surface, and we're going to see that more in uh, some upcoming photos here. The structure itself, like the fruiting body, is hollow. It is very stiff when young, becoming flaccid when past maturity. Then these grow up to about five inches high and a half inch thick. Here you can see the, the other two species as well. Uh, Mutinus ravinelli on the left, and then uh, Mutinus uh, elegans on the right there.
again. And you can see on the right there, the, the, the slime sheath has yet to occur. And you can see a fly and that uh, sh slime sheath along with the smell of uh, a stink horn, which smells like rotting meat, is designed to attract flies, and the flies will actually carry those spores away. Here you can see a size reference. The vulva is off-white to pinkish, and you can see that sac-like structure at the base there, and it is kind of a cup shape. The egg uh, has a white outer layer, so it really does look like an egg. And uh, if you peel that away, there's this gelat gelatinous layer beneath, and it has a very elaborate center, and we'll look at that center in a second. These are egg-shaped. These are often buried just below the soil or sitting with the top sticking out, and they're up to about three inches in diameter. These are saprobic, they are terrestrial, they are common in urban areas. I often see them in uh, Saskatoon. And uh, again, like I said, that slime and odor is meant to attract flies. And those flies carry away the spores because the flies are tricked into thinking it's meat, rotting meat. And then these are uh, solitary to gregarious. Uh, I've only ever seen them gregarious like this, big, large groups of them. And they're found spring through fall, but I tend to find them most often in May and June. The edibility is choice, but they are only edible uh, when they are in the egg form. Uh, after that, when they emerge, they have that slime that develops and that really awful odor. It wouldn't be toxic, but it's just really gross. Um, when in an egg, uh, you can eat them and they taste kind of like a radish crossed with a mushroom, so it, it's quite a nice taste. I have tried them. Now here is a uh, look-alike alert that is quite important. You have the egg of an amine of a mutinus on the left, and you have an egg of an amanita on the right, because these are both vulval mushrooms, and they will both uh, start off in this egg form, and as you can see, they look very similar. Here's a cross-section of what a stinkhorn egg will look like. And remember I said it's quite elaborate. Here's an Amanita cross-section, so very different. So you make sure that when you're picking these eggs that you cut them in half. Because here on the left-hand side we have Amanita muscaria, which is uh, hallucinogenic and mildly toxic, and if you think you're eating just a normal mushroom, that can be quite disturbing. In the middle is a fatally toxic destroying angel. On the right is Caesar's mushroom, which is actually uh, uh, edible. But uh, again, you need to be careful there. The next group of species here, uh, the next two species we're looking at are the uh, stinkhorns, because Previously, we were looking at the dog stinkhorns, so these are the actual stinkhorns, phallus species. You have the common stinkhorn, which is phallus impudicus, on the left, and you have the dune stinkhorn, phallus hadriani, on the right. Uh, so these do have a cap. They are reminiscent of morels. Often people will mistake uh, these for morels when they're first starting out. And then, of course, they're quite disappointed because just like the last mushroom we looked at, you really only want to eat these in the egg stage. Uh, it'd be quite disgusting to try and eat them otherwise. Uh, so the cap has tan ridges with black pits and rarely white in uh, P. impudicus. And you can see uh, an example of a white one. Uh, it has angular pitting similar to morels. Uh, there will sometimes be a veil remnant on the tip from that universal egg-like veil. It'll actually leave itself uh, a remnant on the tip. And you can see that happening on the left-hand mushroom there. And uh, these develop, again, a thick olive black coating of uh, really uh, putrescent slime in terms of its odor. And these grow up to about four inches tall, so uh, a big enough mushroom. And again, there's that slime coating now covering this 
be quite sticky if you touched it. Here's a size reference for you. There's another white one. So the stipe is white in color. And this one, we would say it has a stipe. Uh, what we were just looking at, the uh, the dog stink horns, really it's just one structure. But this one actually does have a stipe and a cap. So it is uh, hollow. It is cylindrical, so about the same width uh, across its entire structure. It is firm when young, and then again becoming flaccid when it's past maturity. And these grow up to about six inches high and two inches thick. So all told, you're talking about a six inch stipe and a four inch, so that's almost a foot. You know what I mean? So it is a big mushroom. The vulva is off-white to tan in P. impudicus, and that's on the right there. Or it's purple in P. hadriani, and that's on the left. And they're cup-like, as you can see. Leathery. Almost like eggs from the movie Alien, if you're a fan of science fiction or horror, like I am. So, the egg is off-white to tan on its outer layer in Phallus impudicus. And then it has a purple outer layer in Phallus hadriani. And again, there is that same gelatinous layer beneath. It has a very elaborate center. Uh, they're egg-shaped. Uh, you could even confuse this perhaps if you just like glanced at it for a bird's egg until you touched it and realized it was uh, more of the consistency of a berry. And then these are again often buried just below the soil or they'll have uh, a little bit peeking out and then they're up to about three inches in diameter. And what you want to do uh, if you are looking for these, you want to look for an adult one and then look in the soil around it because they grow often together. And there's the egg of, uh, of uh, uh, Phallus hadriani. You can see it's purple there. These are saprobic, they are terrestrial, they are common, once again, in urban areas. They have that same uh, dispersal mechanism where they try to attract uh, flies and other um, scavengers and uh, in that manner spread their spores. They are solitary to gregarious uh, and they are found spring through fall. Choice edibles if you get them in the egg form uh, with that radish-like taste that is it's quite nice. I, I've only tried the dog stinkhorns. I've never tried these ones, but uh, it is it is a nice taste. I imagine it's similar. And again, for intermediate mushroom pickers. And then here's the same, what we went over before. That's an Amanita egg on the right. That is Phallus impudicus on the left. Here's a cross section. Those are the Amanita cross sections. That's it. I'm not going to include Phallus hydriani because it's purple. So you're not really going to mistake a white mushroom for a purple mushroom. Here we have uh, the silky rose gill. This is a Vulvariella bombicina. It's a beautiful mushroom. It is not the most common mushroom in Saskatchewan. In fact, it is fairly scarce across most of its range. It's a fairly solitary mushroom. So the cap is white, becoming tan or olive with age. It is convex or campanulate. And if you recall, campanulate is kind of that bell shape uh, that you would see in an old fashioned bell tower. And it usually retains an umbo and uh, expands outwards with age to become umbinate. And that's where it's flat with an umbo in the center. So if you run your finger across, I mean, you don't even have to do that. You can just look at it. It's fibrillose to tomentose. So it has got these kind of, they're scales, but they're almost like a carpety, a carpety feel to them, a shaggy carpet. They're almost hair-like. Uh, the margin is tomentose. Again, you have those sort of hair-like uh, fibers hanging down, and these grow up to about five inches in diameter. Here's a couple size references for you. Like I said, it, it's, it's a very interesting looking mushroom. The gills are white, turning pink with age. 
and we actually just saw them. I'll just go back a little bit. You see that dark pink on the right hand side. It's a, it's a, a nice looking mushroom. Gills are, are, are nice and pink there. And that of course would be a defining feature between uh, this mushroom and Amanitas. Amanitas will have white gills. Uh, those gills are free from the stipe. Short gills are present between these very crowded gills, but uh, they're not frequent. And they are very crowded. You can see how they're just crushed together there. And then this produces brownish pink spores. Again, that's another defining feature. There's the spore print. Amanitas, all Amanitas will have a white spore print. The stipe is white, it is cylindrical, it has a central attachment to that cap, it is smooth, and the base is encased in a vulva. And you can see that there. It's just got this kind of egg-like sac at the bottom, and then this mushroom grows up to about six inches high and about one inch thick. Then there's the vulva itself. It is very thick. It's mottled brown and white, and it is cup-like. These are saprobic mushrooms. They attach directly to decaying hardwoods. They are quite solitary. They are found spring through fall and are quite rare. So you'll often only ever find one or two at once, um, if you find them at all. Their edibility is good. I've never tried it. I've never seen it. Um, I see that their range extends into the province, but again, I've never found this mushroom. Uh, they're for intermediate mushroom pickers, uh, mainly because there are so many defining features between this and Amanitas. And again, uh, Amanitas are mycorrhizal. They don't grow on wood. They grow only ever from the soil. But regardless, here is a lookalike alert for Amanita bisporagera, the exterminating angel. Um, or the Destroying Angel. Sorry, I'm thinking of an old movie called The Exterminating Angel. It's quite good. Uh, so, Volvariella bombacina is on the left. Amanita bisporagera on the right. If it's a young Volvariella bombacina, it will be all white and have a vulva. Right? And if you're picking those and it happens to be a Destroying Angel next to it, you could accidentally pick the Destroying Angel. So just a heads up. And then sometimes Volvariella bombacina will take on kind of an olive hue. And again, that's a very close lookalike to the death cap, which is on the right hand side there. So for instance, uh, if you're picking these off a, a dead tree and it's extending down the base and some of those, uh, some of those, uh, pink gills are growing from the root system and suddenly there's a, a death cap next to it, you may mistake the death cap for potentially Volvariella bombacina. So be careful because that would be a fatal mistake. Now this one is the big one in this group of mushrooms. Okay, This is uh, the mushroom that causes the majority of fatal mushroom poisonings in North America. This is the stubble rose gill. People think they're picking this and they end up picking, picking a death cap. So this is Volvo pluteus gloiocephalus and it does grow in Saskatchewan. I've, I've encountered it a couple times. The cap is variable in color and it ranges from off-white to gray to grayish olive to grayish yellow. It is radially streaked and slightly darker in the center up top there. It is ovoid, flattening out, often retaining a broad, shallow umbo and becoming umbinate, right? Uh, it is shiny and smooth. The margin is enrolled when young, becoming more striate with age. And these grow up to about four inches in diameter. Now, if you're familiar with uh, Amanita phalloids, the death cap, uh, you will just see right from this photo the striking resemblance between the two. Here's a size reference. So again, it's also of similar size. Now the gills are off-white, 
becoming t pinkish tan by maturity. They are free from the stipe, fairly close together. There are frequent short gills, and it has a pinkish brown spore print. So again, that's a defining difference right there. Death caps will have white gills and will have a white spore print. Here we have a spore print that is not white at all. The stipe is white in color, bruising light brown with age or damage. You can see that there. It is clavate, so kind of with a thinner apex and a thicker base and kind of a, a taper towards the apex from the base. It has a central attachment to the cap and it grows up to about five inches high and one inch thick. The vulva is white and cup-like. Now, if you've seen the vulva of a death cap, they actually don't have bear much resemblance beyond both being a vulva. Uh, this is, is much smaller than what you would see in a death cap vulva, which looks more like an egg. So the ecology is saprobic. They are terrestrial mushrooms. They are found in grassy areas and on disturbed soil. So especially along paths and stuff like that. They are solitary to scattered. They are found late spring through fall and relatively uncommon in Saskatchewan, but I have encountered them. Their edibility isn't great, at least I don't think so. Uh, mistaken identity between this mushroom and the death cap. Like I've said, it accounts for the majority of poisonings that we have in North America. And as a result, these are for advanced mushroom pickers. And I'll kind of explain to you a bit uh, a bit of the uh, reasoning behind that because a lot of the people who in past decades uh, like these last past couple of decades that have uh, been involved in fatal or serious poisonings from this mushroom have actually been of Asian descent and they're immigrants and they're coming from countries that may not have death caps but where this mushroom is very plentiful they call it a straw mushroom or various other names and it's something that they commonly pick and then they come here they don't really have that knowledge of a death cap and they end up moving to a place in north america where death caps occur but are more prevalent than these ones and then they pick the death cap thinking that they're uh picking a stubble rose gill and then you know they serve it on the table for the family and end up the whole family in the ER. Uh, so that's happened several times apparently and that's uh, that's kind of the reason why this has now taken the lead for the majority of uh, serious and fatal poisonings in North America. Combine that with uh, the fact that this mushroom uh, or at least the death cap tastes really really good it actually tastes better than the stubble rose gill and it smells good so that's where that problem stems from and here's the lookalike alert a vulval pluteus glycephalus on the left and a young death cap on the right uh, it has yet to form its uh its uh Anulus, so the ring, the skirt-like ring that you'd find on a death cap because it's young, uh, they look very similar. And that's everything for this presentation, so a short one. There's not a whole lot of other uh, vulval uh, mushrooms in Saskatchewan other than the Amanitas, which we'll cover next time. So this is the Mushroom Wizard. I hope you're staying safe when you're picking these mushrooms, and have yourself a nice day.